This Week at NASA. With skies overcast, the next space shuttle crew set down their T-38s at the Kennedy Space Center, eager to begin their launch dress rehearsal, or terminal countdown demonstration test. It is great to be back. It uh, feels like I'm coming home. During a question and answer session with the media, STS-130 Commander George Samka, pilot and first-time flyer Terry Virts, and mission specialist Bob Benkin, Nicholas Patrick, Catherine Heyer, and Steve Robinson expressed excitement about their upcoming mission. Uh, this is a very special trip for us. It marks the uh, transition uh, for us from flight preparation and training uh, to the uh, operational stage of our, our flight. We're looking forward to flying this flight here in just a few weeks. This line is pretty, pretty well painted. The rehearsal simulates the countdown to a launch. The crew and ground teams can familiarize themselves with their equipment and practice procedures in the event of an emergency. Getting it set up, there's Velcro wrapped around the person. The crew will fly aboard Space Shuttle Endeavour, bringing the Tranquility Node and its cupola for installation on the International Space Station. The STS-130 mission is scheduled to lift off from the Kennedy Space Center on Sunday, February 7th at 4.39 a.m. Eastern. The scheduled launch of NASA's new Solar Dynamics Observatory, or SDO, is drawing near. SDO is the solar variability mission. It is going to revolutionize our view of the sun. Its pre-launch briefing, conducted at NASA headquarters Good in afternoon. Washington and the Kennedy Space Center, gave media a look at SDO's unprecedented mission to study the sun and its dynamic behavior. SDO is designed to help us understand the sun's influence on Earth and near-Earth space by studying the solar atmosphere on small scales of space and time and in many wavelengths simultaneously. We know how much SOHO and other spacecraft have uh, revolutionized solar physics. Uh, SDO has been designed to take advantage of what we learned from those missions. And I, I see this as a, a revolutionary mission and the data that SDO produces in five to 10 years, we're gonna be looking back and just amazed at what we learned from it. The next International Space Station crew briefed reporters on their upcoming mission. NASA astronaut Tracy Caldwell Dyson was joined by Russian cosmonauts Alexander Skyarsov and Mikhail Konlenko to discuss their upcoming Expedition 23 mission. We have highlights um, of our mission, uh, mainly focusing around vehicle traffic. During our mission, we'll see Progress shuttles and Soyuz. Uh, we will have both a US, seg a U.S. stage EVA as well as a Russian stage EVA and a whole host of science experiments and ISS maintenance to perform. The trio of space travelers are scheduled to launch aboard a Soyuz spacecraft April 2nd, then dock with the International Space Station two days later. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. Members of the STS-129 crew continued their whirlwind tour of NASA centers. Five members of the Space Shuttle Atlantis crew thanked employees at the Stennis Space Center for their part in a safe STS-129 mission to the International Space Station in November. STS-129 was the last scheduled Space Shuttle crew rotation mission to or from the Space Station, returning ISS crew member Nicole Stott to Earth on November 27th. The 11-day mission also delivered supplies and spare parts to the complex. The Mars Exploration Rover Opportunity this week celebrates six years of exploration and research on the surface of the Red Planet. Opportunity landed on Mars January 24, 2004, nearly a month after its twin, Spirit, landed on the other side of the planet. Spirit is currently stuck in a sand trap and its prognosis for getting out is not good, although it will in any event continue providing observation data to scientists back on Earth. Opportunity, however, still chugs along, currently on a seven-mile trek from Mars's Victoria Crater to the Endeavour Crater to continue its research. Both rovers have well exceeded expectations, surviving more than five and a half years longer than their original 90-day missions. The most powerful camera aboard the NASA spacecraft orbiting Mars will soon be taking photo suggestions from the public. And what we'd like to do is have lots of eyes looking at lower resolution pictures, figuring out what might be very interesting. And the public can help us point to things that maybe somebody else has not noticed. 
So we can bring everybody along, we can pick places to get high resolution images, the public gets to play, and we get some cool pictures. Since arriving at the Red Planet in 2006, the High Resolution Imaging Science Experiment, or HiRISE camera, on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has recorded nearly 13,000 observations of the Martian terrain. Now, students, researchers, and others can view Mars maps using a new online tool to see where images have been taken and suggest locations for new ones. To check out how you can nominate your Martian photo op, visit www.nasa.gov MRO. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.